Hey guys, this is Philip with the 10th Starshot Onslaught update video. Uh, this is going to be one of, uh, one of the largest updates that I've done to date and includes a variety of new uh, new changes, including, uh, including the implementation of storage, uh, reflective projectiles, and the complete overhaul to game sprite assets. Uh, let's just get right into it. Uh, one of the first things I did for this sprite for this patch was to rework the NPC and player sprites to have more animation. Uh, basically, this was done in preparation to outsource outsource the actual sprites and animation to a freelancer, which is cur still ongoing. I'm still waiting for a few things to come back, such as uh, planets, which are which are fairly uh, large and intensive. Uh, I also placed uh, try catch statements for menu buttons to reduce the chance of crashing when it oversteps the internal array for the objects. So basically, if you are at the end of a list of objects in, in a menu and you click next, it's not going to crash since it knows that it's at the end and it will swap it accordingly. Uh, I also lowered the speed of drifting ships spawned by event. Uh, this makes it easier to keep up with them or catch up with them with your, with your ship if you're trying to loot them for items and objects. Um, and that, and basically, it, they're not just speeding through space where they're almost impossible to keep up with. Uh, I also set hairstyles and expressions to have multiple frames similar to outfits. Uh, this is to fix an issue where the hair where the hairstyles and expressions seem to jump off the body depending on what frame the UCS is in. So basically, with the with outfits, uh, they're each drawn each frame of the outfit is drawn to match a frame of the UCS and that prevents it from looking like it's just jumping off the body altogether. Uh, I also diversified the top of the type of gun modifiers that a ship can spawn with. Uh, they'll the, and basically this is uh, this is uh, introducing a new form of weapon modifiers called factory weapons. Uh, these weapons can't be a spiral. Uh, cannot be spiral weapons, of course. Uh, they're limited to five shots per multi-shot. If they if they are multi-shot, uh, they can't be a laser, and their damage is no higher than twenty, uh, as well as it is toggled. Basically, this is to increase the uniqueness of any given ship that you might buy or capture. Uh, in that regards, uh, so that way, if you go through it and you see a modifier that you really like. Uh, you can hold on to it and use it for whatever it means you want. Uh, and there are basically, there are currently there are over 3,000 uh, factory weapons in, in the array that, that ships pull from. So it's unlikely that you get to, uh, to the same modifier twice on any given ship immediately at that, at that point. Uh, I've also enabled, re-enabled, uh, actually before that, I actually added a new functionality to the shipyard called Ship Save, which allows you to reconstruct a given ship. Uh, so in the event that you, you're out in space and your ship gets blown up uh, and you don't want to have to, and it, was, it had a very unique modifier that you don't know if you'll ever be able to get again, if you have it saved uh, from the shipyard, uh, you can just re you can just reapply it, and it'll recreate the ship exactly with whatever whichever modifiers you have on it. So basically, this is a way to basically have that configuration always on 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 standby. And this this ship configuration is saved to the player itself, not the actual shipyard. Uh, as I mentioned before, storage was implemented this this patch or this update, so it's been enabled. The player is now able to store items in storage buildings, and it and it behaves similar to the ship uh, to the general ship storage. So it it behaves very similarly to that, where you can basically put in twenty items and have it stored there. So it's really the first instance of having permanent storage available uh, to to go through and keep. So as it's as before this update basically the only way you could really store stuff is if you had it in your inventory or in a ship's inventory which are both subject to being destroyed like if you die you drop whatever you have in your inventory and if your ship explodes you lo you drop only a portion of what was in your inventory so this is a more permanent way of storing things and having them on on the standby um We've also implemented, uh, we've also added 20 additional projectiles that which can now spar spawn as part of weapon modifiers. And this is going to be as part of a overall or overarching 
method uh, for expanding on projectiles. At some point, at some update in the future, I will be increasing the number of projectile types uh, to, to go from about the 30 to 40 that we have now to probably over 400 to 500. And that, that'll greatly affect the diversity of, uh, wep of weapon modifiers, gun modifiers that you could get at any given time. Uh, we've also we've also re-enabled or we've added angle lock the an angle lock button to the shipyard. Uh, now up until this point, there there's been a uh, there was an item added for angle lock where if you wanted to swap between the different methods of of controlling your ship, you could you could apply one and it would change the, how the how the ship functions uh, in in terms of flight. Well, now there's actually a button that allows you to toggle between that as well, in case you don't have that uh, that item on on standby for you for to change it. Uh, the player's speed and acceleration is now is now correct is now correctly clears when you touch a planet's surface. So there was a bug where if you landed on a planet's surface and you were you were previously flying through space and you landed on a planet's surface and you jumped, it would still hold on to the acceleration. Um, for that, and it basically would just skyrocket in space. So we made, uh, made I made some changes to that, getting it to set it to where it wouldn't do that. So when you land, it definitely clears it. Uh, in that regards, I also fixed a bug that that was causing NPCs to float above the planet's surface, and I think this was caused primarily by the expansion of the size of the of the sh uh, sprite sheets that could have so originally the original sprite sheet for for npcs was like it was like something like five like 500 by 500 now it's up to the maximum which is 4096 by 4096 so i definitely wanted to keep uh, to um, needed to adjust that to make sure that it it matched accordingly I also made it so that uh, storage is one of the buildings that now defaults on the starter planet. So, uh, one if you when you first start the game, you first land on the land of the first planet. A few of the buildings that are guaranteed to be on there are going to be a shipyard, uh, a refinery, and a library. So you can so you can get started and you're not stranded. Uh, so one of the, an, the additional building now is now uh, storage. So if you want to start, if you want to go out in space and you find some stuff that you want to keep, you can always bring it back, and you have that little extra space for storage outside of your inventory and your ship's inventory. Um, I also did a lot of. Uh, I also added uh, re storage cards to the game. So if you go to a certain planet and you click on this card, it creates a new storage. So basically, it's a way where you can. You could think of it as if you have a bunch of these cards and you go to a planet that has few buildings on it, you could basically turn that entire planet into a, store, a storage planet if you wanted to do something of that sort or if you were inclined to do something of that sort. Uh, I also did a lot of reworking for the uh, extinguisher. Uh, when you click a certain point, the player starts floating toward that point slowly while it drains the ammo for the extinguisher. Uh, this way, you'll still get the you still get the directional control as is as it was expected for for in space, but it shouldn't uh, affect the speed and overall trajectory of the player relative to the ship that they that they came out of. So basically, if you uh, just to give you a, a an example of when you might use this, if you were chasing after a ship uh, that spawned as part of a salvage. Uh, sal the salvage event, and you and you wanted to keep up with it, if you if you match the speed. Of that ship, uh, of that ship with your current ship, and then get out of it, and you have the extinguisher set on yourself. You can then float your slowly float yourself over from your ship to the new ship, and then once you get inside of it, you can then pull whatever items out you want out of it, or check to see what it has, and then after you're done, you can get out of it and float yourself back to your, your ship. So it's just a tiny way you can you can navigate slightly when you're off of a planet's surface and you're not in a ship in that regards. Uh, also, right-clicking while you're affected by the recoil that's applied to you from the extinguisher clears the recoil speed, similar to what happens when you right-click with a ship. If you right-click with a ship uh, when, while you're in a ship, it comes to a full full stop. Uh, well, in this case, it's it's more relative in this in this case where it'll clear the recoil speed, but whatever speed you were at when the sh when you were in, when you came out of your ship is still going to be there. So you'll still move. Rel your speed will still be relative to whatever ship you came out of. Um, I also did a fix for the shield gun modifiers. Uh, 
they weren't. Or they there was a bug with it that was preventing them from rotating around the, the ship. So I had to make a couple of adjustments with that. Uh, I also adjusted the general speed of the crafted uh, shield gun modifiers to go from from ten up to fifteen, uh, and this makes it less likely that you'll collide with them. Uh, in general, even if you're moving at slow speeds, I do have plans in the works in the works to make uh, the speed of projectiles overall match the speed of the ship when they're flying through space. So at so that they'll, they'll work at higher speeds without completely destroying your ship the moment you fire. Uh, I've also enabled gravity for the space phenomenon. Uh, so basically, if you have something like a black hole or a star. Uh, it now has the ability to pull on players, ships, projectiles, and resources. Uh, I'm still working on getting it to where it has some. It does something unique uh, when when it actually when those items actually collide with the objects themselves. Uh, I am planning, of course, the black hole. It may just destroy the ship, but I might have something like if you have a space phenomenon such as a wormhole. If you collide with it, if it if you get gravitationally pulled into it it might just warp you to another side of the universe or another part of the universe altogether without having an actual war ship warp to go through. Um, I've also, as mentioned earlier, I, I enabled reflective functionality. It's been, it's been completely enabled. So now projectiles have the potential to be reflective or bouncy uh, whenever they strike a surface or a given target. So there are, I did also retroactively change uh, several crafted guns, such as uh, grenades, uh, such as grenades and general cluster bombs, to where they have this bouncy projectile, uh, this or this bouncy quali uh, qualification. So you'll see them bounce if you fire them up in the air, and then gravity pulls on them and it, and it collides and goes from there. So they they now work off of that, and basically the whole reflective functionality works off of a concept known as supplementary angles. Um, it and the way it basically, if you subtract uh, one, if you subtract the angle of the projectile as it, as it's coming in from 180, it'll basically it'll reflect it in a certain in a certain way to where it'll bounce off uh, it'll bounce off of that point as if it was reflected, of course. Now, granted, there are there are a few tricks that make this work a little differently than it was than it would if it was. Uh, on a just a straight on a straight uh, level playing field where you know up is always up and down is always down. If it's on, when it's on a circular map, there there have to be a few adjustments uh, based off of what quadrant the projectile lands in. So let's say for example, if you had um, if you have four quadrants based off of uh, off of the where it is in relation where the projectile is in relation to the center of the planet, it knows it knows to use a certain angle, so it may not subtract the projectile's angle from the angle of, from 180. It might, proje it might subtract the projectile angle from like 360 or 270 to get that perfect bounce relative to the ground in a given quadrant. Um, I've, also I've also, of course, adjusted uh, repulse mines to, use, to utilize this new uh, reflective functionality for projectiles, so it's, more, it's a more perfect reflect whenever they collide with other projectiles now. Uh, I also um, I also fixed an emergency pod bug that allowed it to be controlled while it was free falling through space. Just as a as a side thing, I, I didn't want, that's something that it shouldn't it shouldn't have been able to do to begin with. Uh, and I also added a ship call functionality to the shipyard. So let's say for example you jump out of your ship um, in that regards, uh, and you can't get back to it, but you manage to land on a planet that has a shipyard. You can just go to the shipyard, click the call ship functionality. And it pulls it straight over. Uh, it'll just teleport it to where you are and set its uh, its speed to zero, and you can just go off from there. Now, I have also added uh, additional functionality for death, for on death, where if you die, uh, if you're if you like, for example, if you die but your ship wasn't destroyed in in the process, uh, it actually spawns you in your ship at your home planet with 20% armor and the gravity dampeners off. Uh, and this basically allows it prevents the rescue a uh, rescue pod, pod from overriding the call ship functionality in the shipyard. I, I've also standardized the time that it now that it it now allows for you to respawn. So previously it it was basically done on a random timer. So if it would pick a certain number between zero and five hundred, and once it got that number, it would then spawn you and go through it. But that wasn't very standardized. Sometimes it would have you wait 
basically two seconds. Sometimes it'll wait, have you wait 30 seconds. Uh, so in this case, now the time has been standard, standardized to 10 seconds. Uh, after 10 seconds, it'll spawn you and you, it goes from there. Uh, finally, I've added an additional 20 outfits uh, to the uh, 20 new outfits to the game, uh, including uh, several, ver including uh, like a scientist outfit, a, a suit and tie, a business outfit, suit and tie, uh, several several marine and ninja outfits uh, in in addition to it. So currently, I, while I have it where I can choose them from the uh, from the actual character creation i do intend for these to be set in such a way to where e npc you would get them from npcs so basically what this alludes to is that an npc will have npcs will start having will start having occupations like you'll have like a scientist npc a soldier npc uh a tech npc etc or a business npc and if they happen to die or they trade their their suit for uh, they give you or trade or willing to trade their clothing for to you you can then take this item and then apply it similar to any to other items um, that you have and it'll it'll change your outfit from whatever it is currently to whatever the new outfit that it points at is well Outside of that, that's currently what's up for this update. Uh, if uh, feel free to like or and subscribe, or if you have a comment, leave it in the comment below. Uh, thanks for watching.